In sum, the data of those investigators' experiments showed that morality, moral change, matters more than memory, agency, and narrative coherence for how people individuate persons and track their unique identities over time. But you might be thinking, other aspects of being a person matter to my identity, like what I want in life and my personality. Nina Strominger and Sean Nichols investigated some of these other contributors. Ultimately, we find more evidence for the essential role of morality in the self in what they report. They continue to ask that question, what kind of psychological continuity is required to qualify as the same person over time? In study one in their research project, participants read a vignette in which Jim selectively loses mental capacities. Moral conscience, visual object agnosia, desires, amnesia, or none, the control condition. And then they responded to the dependent measure. The transplant recipient is still Jim. How much do you agree or disagree? With the anchors, seven completely agree and one completely disagree. What the researchers found and what we see in figure one is that moral change affects identity significantly more than changes in desires, apathy, or memory, amnesia. And all of these affect identity significantly more than perceptual change, agnosia, and the control. In study two, like Prince and Nichols, they investigated the role of agency in these results. They introduce a new vignette in which the person exercises agency. They help make the change happen. So this is similar to how Prince and Nichols did the agency vignette where they had John the hiker decide to begin acting immorally or morally after his hiking accident um, in an attempt to manipulate the dimension of agency. So the vignette went like this. A pill has been developed that once swallowed would permanently alter only one part of a person's mind without affecting anything else. And then they had participants rate how much would a person change after taking a pill that selectively removed X? And X here was 62 different traits that fell into categories, including perceptions, desires and preferences, memories, and morality. They find that a person was considered most changed by pills that affected moral traits. All of their traits led to significantly less perceived change. These include personality traits, traits related to memory, desires, and perceptual abilities. Note too that the extent that memories affected perceptions of identity um, depended on whether they were social in nature. So tra traumatic memories or memories of parents um, were more likely to be considered um, possible causes of identity change compared to memories of how to get things done or get places. Finally, study five in this interesting set of studies is worth digging into. They used an imaginal exercise of aging to attempt to capture the passage of time in this study they had participants imagine seeing a friend they quote, knew when they were 25 after 40 years apart. They were given a list of changes that the friend underwent. These changes affected aspects of morality, such as the friend becoming racist or cruel or empathetic. Changes affecting personality, such as becoming adventurous or shy changes to cognition, changes to memory, desires, and perception. They also asked them to rate the impact of the change um, in addition to 
the perceived baseline frequency of the change. So again, they're asking how much do changes in these dimensions affect um, the true self of your old friend? Um, and then they also wanted to know, are these relatively rare kinds of changes to see if the frequency um, perceptions actually affected their understanding of their friend's true self as well. What they found is that once again, participants considered changes to morality to make the greatest change to their old friend's identity. After that, it was personality factors, basic cognition and memories, and then perceptions and desires. There was no effect of age of the participant, and interestingly, and contrary to my, what might be expected about distinctive rare events and their effects on people, the rarer the event in frequency, the less it was seen as contributing to the self.